Yeah. Hi, everybody. So welcome to the React.js uh, webinar here today. Thank you for joining us. We've got representatives from uh, around the world, which is pretty cool. So thank you, everybody, for taking the time today. Um, first of all, I just want to like thank everybody and also just wish you all um, health and, and uh, strong spirit in this you know, challenging time. Uh, uniquely, this is something that everyone in the world is uh, kind of struggling with simultaneously. And it's uh, really beautiful that we're able to come together um, and, and learn and grow. So we really appreciate your time. So my name is Jacob Smith. Uh, I'm here based in Detroit. Um, I'm our I'm the Altimetric uh, Community Director for the uh, Collider Detroit office. Um, so at just kind of the highest level, um, for those that aren't familiar, uh, Altimetric is a global leader in digital transformation, essentially helping large uh, corporate clients uh, stay ahead of the curve with technology change and with innovation, um, a lot of uh, different exciting uh, things there. Um, the Collider Initiative is our community-facing uh, initiatives. This is essentially um, a community hub for software engineers, helping folks come together, learn, and grow, uh, very much in the spirit of what we're doing here today. I, obviously, before the pandemic uh, situation, things were going a little bit differently. Uh, we have a physical office in downtown Detroit where we're regularly hosting um, all types of different content, ranging from educational to uh, community building and uh, hackathons and competition, all sorts of different things, uh, with the intention to, to spread this energy around the country and around the world uh, with additional collider spaces in the time to come. Uh, so stay tuned on that front because our plans are changing just a little bit here, uh, but we'll have more information about that coming soon. Um, and so really while the, um, while the outbreak uh, has caused a lot of disruption to uh, our business and, and others, I'm, I'm sure, everybody in their individual lives, um, at the same time, you know, we've seen kind of this exciting opportunity to uh, come together virtually and start to really uh, explore opportunities on our end to start sharing more uh, content with both our team and the broader community because uh, we have just an amazing team with so much incredible uh, knowledge and we want to start sharing more of that. So uh, in the days and weeks to come, please uh, stay tuned and look out for more of these types of sessions uh, as we will have a lot more really exciting content coming soon, and we'll put some links in the chat feature momentarily. Um, and so with that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to hand it over to Tabare Lacerda, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, down in our Montevideo, uh, Uruguay office. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to talk about React.js and um, some, some exciting aspects of that technology and what, uh, what you can do with it. All right, well, thank you very much. As you said before, I am Tavari Lacerda. <laughs> you almost got it. But sometimes when I'm, cool. I'm talking to people, um, especially people that speak English, uh, they just call me Mr. T, right? So that's <laughs> um, easier, right? Um, so let me share my screen, please, so that I can start. Jacob. Working on it. Hold on one second. Yeah. No problem. Sorry, you should be able to share now. Okay. That's right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so today we're going to talk about class versus versus functional components. And about me, my name is Tawari, or just Mr. T. I'm a front-end technical lead here at Altimetric. Uh, I've been working at, at Altimetric for four months, more or less. Uh, I've been working with different projects and that, during that time. Uh, we had an internal project, it was Gloss. And uh, right now I'm working with DevOps, cloud and engineering, and also with, with Fox. Um, we use different technologies. Uh, for Gloss, we had Marin, that it's Mongo, Express, React, and Node. But we also have different technologies, for example, in DevOps. So we use Python, 
Well, we have Redux, of course. We were using some charts for DevOps Cloud and Engineering, and we were using 3JS. And then we switched to Nevo. We also use Material UI, well, and React Grid Layout. Those are some of the technologies that we are using right now. So let's get started. Functional versus class components. So in order to start working with this, what I did was some, something very simple. I created a project using Create React App. So uh, probably you have already used this technology. So the only thing that you have to do is just go to a terminal and just type npx create react app and you just name your application and that will create a boilerplate uh, for an, a react application so this one right here has a react strip that you can check for example here so basically what it does is just has components out of the box like for example alerts or badges buttons oh uh, everything that we already know from, from Bootstrap, but these are components, right? And basically, we just change these components by using the props, like for example, color, primary, and you have this list of properties right here. You can check this website later on. And the other thing is in order to create this mockup, what I did was using something that it's JSON, um, server, right? This right here, and it's very simple to use. So if you see here, um, Visual Studio Code, what I have is a folder that it's named server, and it has a JSON. So it's very simple. So with this JSON file here, and together with the terminal, I am able to create all the endpoints necessary to, to work with this to do this item, right? Uh, so as you can see, I just type in JSON server, I set the port to 4000, I set the file, and also this flag right here that it's a watch. So every time I do something here, for example, I interact with the app, it will be displayed and show here. So as you can see, now we have another get request uh, for the to-dos. Everything that I do will be reflected here in this db.json in real time. So it is something that I strongly recommend if you have not used this before, especially for this kind of things where you need to mock up an application very fast. Um, as I told you before, it will create all the different endpoints that you will need, like for example, you get post, put, batch, delete, and you have all the documentation right here if you need to read it. So the app itself, it's very simple. We have an input button and input text, sorry, where we can add new items and to this list. So as you can see, it is added right here. And uh, what we can do with this items or this to do items is delete them or we can check or uncheck them, right? It's like, okay, you have something to do. I can add a new item. I can say, okay, I finished this item or I can delete them. It's very simple. It's just uh, to showcase this class versus functional components. I will share later on this repo so everyone will have access to it and as I told you, you will find the server that it's only the JSON file, um, a folder, class, another for functional, and another for functional template. So what we have here is the same application, just using classes. So if you go, for example, to the source and you check app.js, you'll notice that this was used uh, with classes. And if you go to functional, you'll notice the same application, but using functions, right? So this is basically a template that you will have in order to compare one on one. And what I'm gonna do, I'm going to work on this functional template right here. And I will start editing the app.js. So this functional template right now, what I have here, it's an exact copy of what I have here in the class. Okay, so it's just a template. 
that if you access it, you will see a class. And what I'm going to do is just transform this class into a functional component, right? So that later on, we will be able to compare um, the class and the function, okay? Um, so let's go over it just a little bit so that you get used to at least, uh, or you have an idea of what you will see here. Um, well, we have this app.js with a state that has all the to-dos, which is an, an array. So we have this as an array of items. You can see here in the components profiler that you have an array with objects, right? Which they are either completed, they have an ID, and also, of course, the item. For example, this one says another, which corresponds to this one. Uh, what you see here is just a number, right? It's not uh, what was used in order to identify the key of the items, but um, an UUID, so that it's something that I also added to the dependencies. So if you check here in the package.json, uh, you will see that I use React UUID in order to create those random ID numbers that make sense, and I don't use an index. Um, so far, so good. Any questions? I see someone wrote in the chat. More info about Collider. No. Questions? Not right now. Pretty good. Thanks. Okay, so I'm doing great. <laughs> Let's continue. So we have the class. We have a state right here with the array of to-dos. And basically, the first thing that I do with this lifecycle hood hook at its componented mount is to fetch all these to-dos. As you can see, I'm running this locally, as I told you before, with this JSON server. And the endpoint is a slash to-dos. And basically, what I do is when I fetch all the items from the API, I just set the state with this to-dos in order to display it when the component is ready. So where the component did mount. Then we have different methods uh, to add the items, to delete items, and to complete items, right? Those are the functionalities or the main functionalities that I showed you before. Um, deleting, checking, adding. Then we have our, the render method. Of course, I use some destruction here to get the to-dos from the state. And we are going to have different components, right? Uh, we're going to have a custom navver. Now let me show this this custom navver because if I go to source components and custom navver, well, I told you before that everything inside this folder were classes, and this is not 100% true because here you can see that in this is just a regular function that it's just returning a navver. Okay, so this component is coming from React Strip. So before we had hooks or lifecycle hooks, or before they were introduced in version 16.8, we had this um, conception that when we had a class or when we had some kind of logic behind our, our view, we would have to use classes. And we would just use functions for representational or for components that don't have any kind of logic. So this makes complete sense, right? There is no state here in this custom navbar, so I just decided to go for a function. Just the same logic that was used before React 16.8. Uh, that's why I wanted to show this custom navbar right here. Let's go back to app.js. Then we have a container. So this basically is a div, right? That has a class container with some inline styling, right? As you already know, this are used as object. Then we have the add to do component that it's the one that we have right here on top with the input on the button. And we are sending this as props, the handle click as props using the this add to do. So if you go to add to do, you will find that this is making reference to this, the class and this method right here that it's add to do. If we continue checking. We have the list to do. And basically we're sending through props the to do's that was part of the state. Yes, Ryan. Um, I just see a question. I'm sorry. It says, is this in a repo somewhere? 
Yeah, it, it will be. Um, it used to be, but the repo continued growing and growing and ad I added so many things to it that I had to delete it. Well, not actually delete it, I, I made it private. But it, it will be for everyone to check, right? I will also uh, share my email so that you can send me an email and you can get access to it. Okay. Okay. Well, great. Uh, so we have this list to do that basically the list to do is it makes reference to all this, all the list to do. And we're sending it through the props, the to do, so that we're set in the state, the handle delete function, that again, it's making reference to the method that we have in this class and the handle complete. If we check the components, well, we have the list to do. And basically what we have is just a table, with a table head with a number to do an action. And then we have the table body with list to do items. So for each one of these items right here. So this is a list to do items. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're mapping. So all the to do's that were that came as props, right? And displaying them. So uh, as I told you before, we have this here just as an index, but um, the key was with the to do dot ID. So remember, this is what I told you before. It's not good practice to use index as a key, of course. And that's why we are using UUID. Yeah, let me show you the UUID, how it looks like. Here's the UUID, okay. Well, so basically that is the app, right? So this is the, the application and everything was built with classes with the exception of the custom network, which is a function. And well, I already explained why I used the function. And now let's start changing. Uh, but first uh, I want to, to make a question. I want to check if everyone understands how it works. If you have any questions before I start transforming this application into a functional uh, uh, component application. Okay, don't be shy. Okay. Well, uh, let's continue then. It seems everything is clear. So, app.js, right? So, this is the only file that I'm going to change. And of course, for obvious reasons, you will find all the implementation here on the functional folder. But the idea is just to go through this app.js. Otherwise, uh, we would spend more time on this. And also, we will notice that we can have classes, functions, all living together in the same app. Of course, it's not good practice and it's not ideal, but um, there is backward compatibility with everything that I'm going to do. So that won't be a problem if you start changing whatever um, application you're already working on. Um, the idea of showing this classes versus, versus functional components is like most of the times when you start learning React, you, know, you just notice that there are some tutorials that are, are a little bit outdated and they just start explaining everything with classes, right? And then you just go to your terminal and you start creating your, your first application using Create React App. And the first thing that you notice is that okay, so where's the word class? <laughs> where, where is it? So uh, sometimes people get confused and they don't know what to do because of course they have some differences. Uh, there is backward compatibility, but um, sometimes people get lost with this part. Okay, so let's get rid of the word class. So let's make this a functional component, right? So let's declare our function 
it's not going to extend from component. It's not a class, so we don't have any inheritance. And as you can notice, component is no longer used. So we're going to get rid of it. Okay. Um, as I told you before, we had state in a class, right? But right now, when we are using functions, what we do have is use state hook, right? So this right here. So if I press tab, let me see, just failed, typical. There you go. So this, all, all this will be written for me. If you're wondering how I did it so fast is because if you go to extensions, you will be able to install this extension right here, which I strongly recommend. So this ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native snippets. And really, they are really useful by just writing some snippets, like for example, IMN, you will get an import module. Or if you want to import a React and component from React, you just write IMRC. And you can even create React components by just typing RCC, and it will create this component right here. You can create class components, you can create functional components, and it's really useful. So let's go back to our app.js right here. So as I told you before, this is just a snippet where it just wrote use state, and then I press tab again, fail me. There you go. And another thing, if you notice, I used to have component right here and I just didn't type use a state. So this is also something that it's done automatically by this snippets. So we don't have a state like this and we're going to use this right here that it's use a state. So how does this work? Basically what we have here is, is an array Right, and uh, we are destructuring it with a state. So here I'm gonna write whatever I have in my state and a setter, right? Like when we had like setters and getters and uh, just like, like we used to have them in the classes, right? And those that are used to object-oriented programming, you already know what I'm talking about, about setters and getters. And so we have the array destructuring right here, and we also have an initial state. So what is the initial state that we have? We have to-dos, right? We have a list of to-dos, and we will need to set those to-dos. So we won't have this option right here. We won't have this this dot set state, but we're going to have set to-dos that it's making reference to to-dos and how we're going to set the state using the set state. And then we have an initial state. And uh, I'll ask you a question. <laughs> what should I write here inside initial state? I'm gonna ask the question so that I can drink some water. <laughs> and I'm Tori. Yeah. That's right, an empty rate. So this is exactly the equivalent, right? We have the user state hook, right? And the state. Basically, they are doing exactly the same. So we have the state and the set of state. And we did exactly the same by doing it this way, right? So we have to do's, the setter, and the initial state. So we have an empty rate for to do's. So we can get rid of this state right here because we already have this. And then we have this component did mount. And of course we don't have this with uh, functional components, but what we do have is a uh, use effect. So again, use effect, I press tab and all this code is written for me. Also, well, it didn't work out of the box, but let's import it, right? Not that way, use effect. Okay, so we are importing the user state, uses, if, use effect, react from react. So if you take a look at this, basically here, we're going to write our effect. And we also have this return that I uh, will not discuss about this, but later on, you will be able to, to read more about this and how these are used. But basically this is used for 
uh, case scenario wherein you want to unmount your component, you want to use this return and use some kind of cleanup. So let's get rid, rid of this. And then we have this array here where we're going to add all the dependencies that we have associated with this effect. In this case, we don't have any. The only thing that we want to do is just to fetch, right? from localhost all the to-dos. So I'm gonna take this from here and I'm gonna paste it right here. Let's get rid of component did mount. Okay, and well, let's just use fetch, right? You can use different technologies, as you may know, um, but I just try to stick to, to the most basic, right? So we are fetching from the localhost port 4,000 to-dos and then we're transforming the response that we're getting from this to-dos. As you can see, we can just copy this. And if you go to any browser, you can paste it. And you will see that I am making a get a request from all the to-dos. And as I told you before, we don't have this set state, right? So what is it that we have? We don't have this because we're not making reference to any classes. And I told you, we don't have this set state. What do we have? So again, another question. What am I gonna do there? We found set to do. Yeah, uh, who said that? Hi, please. Ah, oh, Patricia, oh. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Uh, later on, I will pay you, right? <laughs> thank you very much. So basically, as I said before, we have this set to do this, which is going to do exactly the same as we were used before. And what are we gonna put inside that? Any other person that would like to contribute? This is the setter for the to do's. What do I want to do? I want to set the state in a way of this to do. What should I write? Is this ready? Come on, don't be shy. I'll start picking up names. <laughs> don't make me be evil. <laughs> Come on, this is, I mean, this is uh, very important. It's not that I'm just trying to pick on you or or something, I just want to. So you need to destructure the array of previous to-dos and add the new one. Is that what you're asking? Well, I, I, I um, well, yeah, that's right. So basically what I want, the, the component is mounting for the first time, right? So we don't have an initial state. Well, we do have, but we have an empty array, so we already know this. So I need to set those to-dos. And in order to do that, what should I write here on line 17? Remember, this is the setter for the, this variable right here. So right now it's an empty array. I am making this request here and I need to, well, basically set those to do's. The, the result from the promise. That's right, thank you very much. Exactly, that is what we're doing. So this is how it works. This is exactly the same or it's the equivalent to this dot set state, right? So basically, these are the core constants behind this hoax, right? Everything will be related to it right, uh, use a state and this use effect right here for a life cycle hooks, right? That is the only thing that we're gonna change. Eventually, we will need to change some other things. Like for example, this add to do used to be a method, right, from the class. So right now, if I don't define this add to do, um, it will not be recognized by, by the application. So. We will have to transform all these methods into just uh, functions. As you have noticed, I'm just using arrow functions. 
And we have just one item here, so I, I don't need to use parentheses. And okay, let's just think for this add to, add to do, right? Now line 24, basically what we are creating is a new item, right? With the ID using this UUID method that I mentioned before, with, it will be set as completed to false because of course we are creating a new item and it's not completed because it's new, right? And the item here, it's coming from the props, right? Um, when we want to add to do, we are sending this item. Well, uh, we write it right here. So every new item, but right here, um, a new item will be added. So that is the item that I am creating, okay? Okay. So this is the new item. The item that was sent as props through the input completed as false with a UUID. And basically what we're going to do right now is just to post this item, right? We're going to use fetch. The method will be post with the headers, um, content type of application JSON. And we are going to stringify this new item right? And I will have to make some changes right here. So we have lines 32, 33, 34, four, and 35, and uh, I will need to change this. Now, any volunteer who'd like to start with line 32, what about this const to do? Is this correct? Probably it is not, right? Otherwise I wouldn't be asking. Do you remember any other variable name to do? Uh, yes. I don't know. Was it you, Petre? Is it F Petre? Um, yeah, uh, uh, Facundo. Ah, Facundo. Uh, <laughs> I guess I guess you have to remove this this dot state and look for the name of the use state hook you do it previously and not the name. Okay. Yeah. And very... then change the use state to the set for that hook. Oh, okay. You okay. got to do and set to do. Okay. So we need to change the this dot states. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna just erase it. Instructions. We don't have this because we don't have the class. We don't have the state. You don't need. We just and then we need to change the this dot set state yeah. on the next line to set to do's. Set to do's. Okay, is that it? And you need to pass the to do's. Okay, sorry about that. To do any other thing? Is that it? Uh, I think that's it. Any other uh, here? We have a problem. I think the linter is uh, the to do at the top looks like it's not being used. Mm -hmm. Maybe a typo. This one to do. Yeah, I see like. Yeah, it's gray. not it's not used, but if you look at it, I am basically using the same uh, name this, here. Okay, that's it. That's right. the thing you had to change. It. I have <laughs> name right because I already have this to do. It is right here, so I cannot define this again, right? So let's name this like uh, add to do the um, add it to do probably this is just a name so we need to change this names right here right because we can't use again the to do's because we used it here with a state okay was that clear for everyone and i take that as a yes <laughs> okay <Nothing> just <laughs> thank you very much facundo and okay let's continue so this add to do 
here is ready. So let's continue with the lead item. So the same logic, right? As you can see, this is a very easy to implement, right? Uh, just a few changes and we are transforming our class component to a functional component. So delete item, we are receiving the ID, remember from this UUID and the method of course is delete. And of course, I, I, I don't have any kind of verifications here. Just, uh, this is just to, to show classes versus functional components. You will have to work on that of course later on if you want to and I'll probably use, work with the state differently too, right? Um, so line 43, we have exactly the same problem, right? So we have this to do's. So probably these are the new to do's, the ones that will be deleted. And what I do is just filter through all the to do's that I have. So we don't have this keyword because we don't have a class. We don't have the state as we used to know, right? But we do have our to-dos and we're going to use a filter function where the ID that we are receiving here as a parameter, you know, when it, it is different to the one I am trying to delete will be filtered and then will be showed as the new to-dos, right? So let me, X, well, I cannot go back to this delete. As you can see, it's broken. <laughs> but basically what I'm doing is I have all my to do's, right? And I want to delete one. In order to delete that one, when I click on the delete button, I have the key or I have the ID of the item that I want to delete. So the only thing that I do is just change the state, right? And filter all the to do's or show all the to do's except the one that has the same ID that I'm receiving as a parameter when I want to delete a night. So we made this change right here. And as you already know, we don't have this dot set state, but we have this, this set to do's, right? And the other thing that we'll have here is the new to do's or the deleted to do's or the filtered to do's, whatever uh, name is better or you understand, okay? So we're setting the new to-dos, that is all the to-dos except the one that has the ID that I'm trying to delete. And of course, here I am just changing the view, right? So I am just displaying all the ones that I already had in the state. But before doing this, and this promise, what I did was deleting it from the database, right? So I am just doing two consecutive things here. I am deleting the item. And then the only thing that I do is just display all the to-dos that I had except that one. So as you can see, when I delete this item, I am not fetching again all the items from the database because I already know for this case, right? Because I'm a single user that the items uh, are exactly all the same except the one that I deleted. I don't need to call the database again, right? Uh, was that clear for everyone? I give you like two yeah. or three. Okay, it's like two or three seconds and I take that as <laughs> yes. Thank you, Patricio. Again, I owe you some dollars. <laughs> so let's complete this item. Um, we're gonna define the complete item. Uh, as I told you before, this was a method. Now it's gonna be a function that it's gonna be pretty simple. Um, every time we just checked or unchecked the items, what we are doing is just changing the state of that to do. So we don't have this, we don't have state, but we do have the to do. So let's map through all the to do's, right? So we're checking all the to do's one by one so we have each to do. And if the to do item, the one with the ID has the same ID as the one that I'm trying to complete when I click on the check and uncheck, what I'm gonna do is just basically change whatever I had in the to do dot completed. So remember the to do each to do item has an ID, the item, and it can and it's completed. 
or I mean it is false or it is true. So when we go back here, what we have is very simple. If to do dot completed is true, we set the opposite of that value. So if it is true, what I, I put is the opposite of true, that it's false. And if it is false, I put the opposite of false, which is true. So basically what I'm doing right here is just toggling between true and false, right? For that particular item. And then we're going to use a fetch um, with sending the ID. Um, the method is uh, put, right? We're trying to uh, update the data that we have for this specific uh, to-do item. Um, we set the headers, we send the body, the new to-do, well, not, not the new, the one that we have changed right now. And then the only thing that we have to do is just changing the state, right? Because we, again, it's the same logic that we did for the delete item. We just want to change the state of the, of the app and we don't want to make another API call for this. So we're going to use this set to do's again, instead of this set state. And what we're going to return is just a copy of the to do's, right? In a way, uh, what I'm doing right here, it's just forcing an update, right? Cause if it just, uh, set the to-dos to the to-dos. The application will never know that I made a change in this um, item right here. It's very similar to what I would do with a force update when we were using classes. So I am using this spread operator to get a copy of the state and well, basically returning it and that will trigger the reconciliation between what I had in the virtual DOM and the real DOM. So we are done with all this um, functions right here, add to do, delete item, complete item. And of course we don't have this render function. So let's get rid of this cause the render method um, is used with classes, but with functions, we just need to return, right? We don't need the structuring cause well, first, first of all, we do, we already have access to the uh, to-dos. It is right here, line 11. So we need, we don't need the structuring and we also don't have this set state. So this doesn't make sense at all, but we do have a return, okay? So let's just save this and okay, we still have our div with our app, our custom navbar, there's still a function. The container that was just a div with a class and a padding of two rem. And then we have this components, this add to do, and we have handle click as a prop. But we still have reference to this. So I need to get rid of that because now this is making reference to add to do. And add to do is right here. We have defined this as a function, okay? And then we have our list to do. The to do's is props, so we still have to do's, right? Remember I used the destructuring before when we had the render method. We don't need it anymore, so we just have access to to do's. And then we have the handle delete with no this keyword. This is making reference to the function delete item that we were uh, working before and then how to complete with this complete item right here that it's the one that we were doing. Let's get rid of this. Let's save it. Um, as you can see, I have this plugin right here that it's prettier and basically it's giving me a check mark. So it's checking that basically my, my code is correct and also uh, formatting the code as I saved, right? That, that it's something that you can change. Uh, you have a format on save set to true and my default editor, I mean, for formatting is prettier. Um, so will this work? Here we are. So we have our in the same app with exactly the same functionalities, but this time, app.js is a function 
Okay, let's check if it works. So cross your fingers, especially me. Um, new functional uh, item. So let's click on that. Okay, so we can add items. Very good. Let's see if we can check them. Yeah, we can check them. So we're changing this, uh, right, to complete it to false. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, new functional completed true. False, that's right. So it's toggling, it works, and I can't delete it. Perfect. So all the state here, the to do's, is working perfectly. So we have the add, delete, check, and uncheck. So why, why did we do all this, right? It didn't take me that much. And as you can see, it's pretty simple to achieve this. Now, let's take a look at the code, right? Because as you know, when we are using this create React app, we already set up Babel, right? Or Babel, uh, that it's going to transpile our code, right? For example, to yes, 2015. So that it's gonna change um, the classes, it's gonna change the functions, it's gonna change our functions, and it's gonna be translated in a way, right? Or transpiled into, um, yes, 2015 for this case. So let's compare, right? We have the functional template, we have our class, we have app.js, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything, right? As you can see, this is a class. I'm gonna copy this and let's go back to Babel. I'm gonna paste it right here. And here we have the transpiled code, right? And if I scroll all the way down, I have 188 lines, right? Uh, of course, this is a class and as you might know, classes in JavaScript, it's just syntactic sugar. Um, that basically means that we don't have classes, but what we do have is just exactly the same that we had before, right? We have um, functions and we have prototypical inheritance and that's the way it's gonna be transpired, right? So even though we use the word class, you will not find the word class in this transpiled code. So basically what we are doing is transpiling everything and using this syntactic sugar right here. Uh, but in the end, everything is a function, okay? So let's go back to this. We have 188 lines of code and now let's go to our new functional template, app.js. So it's exactly the same. It's the same we have done. So I'm gonna select all the code. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna delete everything that I had there. Remember it was 188 lines. I'm gonna paste it here. And once it's transpiled, if you scroll all the way down, you will find 100 that we only have 130 lines, right? So uh, what is the conclusion? We have 50 lines of code more when we are using classes. And just look at this app, right? This is a very simple application, but just imagine if we had a larger application and we're just using class components all the time. So we're gonna end up with probably 33 or even more uh, percent of, of, of code in our, um, in our application. So when you, when everything is bundled, right, by a webpack, you will find that if you use classes, you will end up with more lines of code. And of course, in the end, that will hinder performance, right? It's not just that we're using functional components because it's trendy or it's cool, right? There is also evidence why this might end up um, improving performance in your applications. And as you notice, it's very simple to, to change. It doesn't take that long. But on the other hand, I have to say something about classes. And these are all the methods that you have available when you have classes. And I think they are pretty, descriptive with the names like uh, should component update or component did update 
or a component will amount or a component did mount, right? So if we are not going to use classes, at least it is, I think, and I believe it's a very good idea to know exactly how React works and the kind of things that you want to achieve your, all your components, right? And if, if you have uh, coded user classes, probably you will tr just try to find how you achieve that with your hooks, right? And um, I have an example when I, when I was working uh, with a previous project and we were using functional components, right? And we, we, we need to use the component will amount. But of course the developers didn't know about this. So they just didn't know how to use it, right? Because if you go back to your code, just see a use effect here is like, well, what is this use effect? Kind of sounds like something coming from CSS, right? Uh, but of course, since we, we had this knowledge or we, uh, we knew about classes before and all the, ho all the life cycle hoods that we had, uh, well, I, I told that developer, well, what we want to do is just trigger this effect when it unmounts. So we knew by just knowing classes beforehand that we needed to achieve exactly the same with a hook, right? And I, I, I think that is uh, pretty valuable to know and to, to know exactly what you're doing, okay? That's why I, I show this and well, I encourage everyone to, to know how components work and the different phases of mounting, updating and unmounting. Uh, so, uh, of course, if you want to learn more about hooks, uh, you can go to reactjs.org and you will find everything that you need to know right here, right? Uh, if you're working with React, of course, just go to a YouTube video and <laughs> just try to replicate the code and, and work with your own application. But it's always uh, good practice, let's say, to go to the documentation and read, okay? That is why we have all this here. And I think it's pretty clear how this is explained, right? And just go through all these items and later on you'll find that it's, it's gonna be easier to understand all this. Um, okay, um, as I told you before, read the documentation, <laughs> okay? Uh, this is uh, the website for Babel, right? the transpiler, if you want to check or do some checking. And this is my email. So if you need, for example, access to the repo, just ping me uh, to de la Serra <laughs> and at ultimatic.com. And now questions. Do you have any questions? probably a lot. No questions? Well, uh, questions like that, no. I just wanna say like, it was pretty good, pretty understandable what, what you were explaining in in this functionality in my case is pretty good uh, because i haven't code any on react right mm -hmm. so the way that you explained it it was pretty good so right now i'm gonna be more involved in react because uh the way you did it uh it was pretty understandable for, from from my end i don't know any of you guys but uh, it was pretty good thanks okay. Okay, thank you very much, Abraham. It seems that I, I need to pay Patricio and Abraham too. So <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Anybody else? I see there's something there in the chat. Is in a repo somewhere that what Steve Marr said at 6.50, that was some time ago. Yeah, it, it will be will be there. It's going to be a repo. Uh, we'll use GitLab and, and I have to make this public. 
And I don't know if you heard it before, but I used to have one that was the one that I shared, but then I continued with other, um, other workshops and it just became huge. And then I started using it for my, my, my own projects. So I had to make that repo private, but it will be, right? Uh, so again, it's the Lacerda, T Lacerda at altimetric.com, okay? Um, again, you'll find all the code. Um, I'm going to Maybe you can send the repo to, I mean, yeah, at Evanbridge, we have a list of every yeah. event. Well, we'll be making the recording as Sorry. well as any of the links uh, available soon. But uh, for the folks uh, on this meeting, uh, I can send it just, uh, you know, if you want to get into um, what Tabor is covering, uh, you'll have it for more immediate access. So we'll try and get that to you guys in the next day or so. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for that. And if we don't have any questions, I just have to say thank you very much. And I hope that it was clear for everyone. And again, if you have any questions, just write me an email and I will gladly answer all your questions.